Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to a new episode about SAS. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to use the for loop. So if you know a little bit of PHP or ASP or another coding language, you already know what a for loop is. And SAS has pretty much the same functionalities and the same option of a common scripting language. So let's take a look on how the for loop works in SAS and everything we can achieve with it. As I said, SAS comes with a pretty standard type of syntax when it comes to uh, creating a loop. That's why we have three different type of loops that we can create and we're gonna take a look of all three of them. The first one that we're gonna check is for loop. The second one is the while loop and the third one is the each loop. The syntax of the first for loop is pretty easy. So let's write at for as many vars or variables or whatever from a starting point through an end point. And this is just the SAS syntax, it's not actually how uh, you write the for loop. This is the syntax and all the options that you have to remember. So first you declare and you start the for loop with the symbol at and then for. Here you declare a variable that it's gonna be the variable updated on every loop and then you define uh, the limits of the loop. When does it start and when does it end? So let's take a look on actually how to create something. So let's create a at for loop and here I'm gonna specify a variable called space and I want to define this space starting from 1 up through 12. That is the standard uh, number of columns that pretty much every website has. So let's update this text without doing any typos. So through. So now that we have this for loop, we can open our curly brackets and whatever code we put inside these curly brackets, it's going to be repeated basically 12 times from 1 to 12. And every time the space variable is going to get updated with another value. So it starts with 1 and on every loop it gets updated to 2, 3, 4 and so on. So let's say I want to create a padding top that is exponential to this number and increases 10 pixel every time I have a loop. So let's do that. First let's create a class called padding top and then I want to give it a value and the value is basically gonna be space. Whenever I want to print a variable inside a for each loop in the name of the class and not as an attribute I have to do it in this way by typing the hash key or the pound key then curly brackets and then the name of the variable, including the dollar sign. So now every time we have a loop, we are gonna have this class defined as padding top one, padding top two, padding top three, and so on. And here inside this class, I can declare the option that I want. In my case, it's padding top. And as I said, I want this to increase 10 pixels every loop. So every time I have a different number here, this has to be an exponential, a multiplication of the number. So let's do the base one, 10 pixel, multiply it by the variable space. Let's save it. Let's wait for our SCSS compiler to compile everything and let's access the compile file. And as you can see here, now I have all these classes automatically generated that go from one to 12. And every time I have the padding top, the initial base value multiplied by the number that it's in the class. So padding top one means padding top 10 pixel to 20 pixel, three, 30 pixel and so on. And of course we can limit this. We can create, for example, a bunch of classes called PT. Let's save it. Let's check again the file. So every time you have a container and we want to apply a spacing, a padding top of 30 pixel, you just write in the container the class PT-3 and that's it. And you have this. And of course with this method you can generate everything else in the same loop we can generate different things. So let's say I want to generate also the padding bottom 
but now because I don't want it too long, I want to go from one through six, the attribute padding bottom, 10 pixel, let's save it, let's check the compile. Now we have PT1, it's padding top 10 pixel, PB1, it's padding bottom 10 pixel, and so on. So we created these sort of dynamic padding spacing option we just by simply writing a really simple for loop and this is pretty great with this method we can create also a pretty standard column with percentages like that type of column that bootstrap is based on and i'm going to show you how to do it let's maintain this exact same format but of course we're going to change the declaration of the class first i want this to be called column and this is gonna be column dash or hyphen one, column two, column three, and so on. And here we have to declare the width of the column. And instead of having this calculation, I wanna return the percentage or the actual width of this column that has to be a percentage exponentially calculated with this number. So for example, if this is column one, this width has to be equal to 100%. And how do we achieve that? By doing a simple calculation inside the for each loop. So let's define this width variable that if you notice here, we don't have it declared. So let's declare it here. And the width variable, it's gonna be equal or column to the calculation, the built-in calculation that SAS can do with the super simple function called percentage. And with the percentage, we have to define what type of calculation we wanna return, what type of number. And if we return a 0.5 number, oops, sorry. If we return a 0.5 number, this percentage function is gonna return 50%. So let's save it and let's check if it works. Yes, as you can see, we have the column from one to six always set at 50% because we calculated the percentage of the 0.5. This is great. We have integer number from one to six. So what we have to do, we have to simply take the number space or the variable space that it's gonna um, change is gonna automatically update from one to six and use it to divide the number one. Because if you know a little bit of math, this is pretty standard. Basically we're dividing one by one is gonna be equal. One divided by two is gonna be 0.5. Uh, one divided by three is gonna be 0 0.33, maybe periodic 33 and blah, blah, blah. So we can achieve the zero point result, like for example, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 and so on with this simple divided. So if we save it and we access the compile style, now we have our column, column one is 100%, column 2 is 50%, column 3 is 33.333%, column 4 25 and so on so on until reaching the last one. And this is great. With this super simple calculation, we created a pretty solid and pretty common column system. The other option is the while loop that works pretty much in the same way and we can achieve the same result. So if you have a variable that it's a number, you increase the number every time you have the loop until you reach that specific number, until you reach the limit that you set, and then the loop stops automatically. So the syntax is while the variable declared, it's something with an integer. This something could be it's bigger than, it's identical, it's smaller than, and this is the uh, type of syntax that you can use with this while loop. So let's take a look on actually how it works properly and how we can recreate this same for loop with the while loop. So let's say that, for example, I have a variable called num that stands for number and the number it's equal to six. Then I have the at while loop, the dollar num variable, it's bigger than zero. Let's open the curly brackets. As far as these variable is bigger than zero, this while loop is gonna continue. So we can do exactly the same we did here. And let's comment this section out. So we're not gonna see the same code. And the width percentage, now it's gonna be equal to 
num, but the number, if we don't do anything inside the while loop, it's not going to change. It's always going to be six. So this loop is going to keep going forever. Inside every loop, we have to force the number variable to update and be equal to number minus one. So we decrease, we start from six and we go down until zero and until this is this variable is bigger than zero so it's not zero but at least one this loop will continue and now we can update this variable and replace space and having the width so if we do that let's save we're gonna have the same result but of course inverse six and then we go five four three two one of course we can change it we can do the same we can start with this one and then going plus one until this it's smaller than seven we can achieve the exact same result but in reverse so it's pretty handy so it's pretty much it for this lesson we look at the for loop and the while loop i left out the each loop because it's the most complex of all the three loops and it's the one that we can use the most and i actually like to use the most because it gives me way more flexibility than these other two and it allows me to create way more cool stuff with sas and i'm gonna show you uh, what i mean by that and the most common functions I usually use with the each loop in the next lesson. So it's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website, where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.